My name is uh, Kelly Paffin. I'm technical manager for Invino Engineering LLC, located in Tampa, Florida. We are a domestic international engineering firm specifically for steam and condensate systems. And today I want to talk about when are condensate pumps re required in the system. And too many times we're putting condensate pumps in when we really don't need a condensate pump. The thing about it is condensate pumping, and one way to correct condensate pumping issues is not installing or removing condensate pumps when the units are not needed in the system. So many times we put in a steam system and the suppliers, oh, you need a condensate pump. And we don't even ask, why do we need a condensate pump? And then, as you can see this in the picture, then we have steam from the flash steam coming out and pumping issues, and which is a quite common problem with the steam in a condensate system. Condensate pump installations, a lot of components are put in the system, as I was talking about, and then we add a condensate pump. And the thing is, this is a common, you know, application here where we have a shell and tube heat exchanger coming down here through a steam trap and then into a condensate return system. And the question is, do we need a condensate pump there to get the condensate back to the system? It, it, it depends on a number of variables in the system, which we have to look at as a system, not just a single component. When we're looking at the condensate system, we have to do the classifications. And there are four classifications of a condensate system. One is a standard condensate system, which is gravity or atmospheric condensate line pressure maintained at or close to zero PSI, which is very important on a number of process applications. The other one is low pressure, one to 15 PSI. And today's technology is pressurized condensate systems which are operating 16 to 99 PSI for medium pressure and high pressure we're over 100 PSI. Now a condensate tank with a pump system can be put into any one of these systems depending on what we're trying to accomplish. So on a gravity system uh, a 0 PSI or low pressure of 1 to 15 PSI the thing with this type of a system, let's say up here we have a process that modulates here. And the modulating the steam to the process can be as low as zero PSI going to the process. Then the condensate needs to come down by gravity, you know, to a pumping unit because we have to deliver it either back to the boiler plant or back to the de-aerator. And with those types of processes, they cannot tolerate any pressure. Now, as a standard condensate system, as I was talking about, steam is given to the processes and then we come back to the condensate pump here, which is pumping back into the de-aerator. This system here does need to have a condensate pump put in and then deliver the condensate back to the boiler plant. And the same thing is when we put in an atmospheric tank system that we have to understand we're going to lose flash steam to the system. The standard condensate systems with a condensate pump, uh, the thing is, is that in our engineering assessments, their percentage is about 25% of the condensate pumping units are not needed. It's not uncommon for us to come in and eliminate condensate pumps. And one we just did was 18 of the 24 condensate pumps were eliminated. They didn't need them. The thing is, a condensate pump is needed when the system uh, drain divides a steam trap uh, or control the outlet pressure here, which is only here, exceeds the outlet pressure. So the thing is, is that as long as P3 is greater than P4, then you can deliver condensate back into the condensate return system without a need for a pump. And there's a multitude of applications out there that can deliver the condensate back to great distances without having a pump. An example one would be tracing systems in chemical refinery or other applications. 
The other thing that we have to deal with uh, in a standard condensate system is pressure in the line. Uh, you know, all condensate lines, unfortunately, uh, operate with back pressure due to the following. Uh, a lot of issues with other size condensate lines. Uh, people not sizing the lines properly. The other thing that happens is neglect of steam traps. Blowing steam into the condensate return line, the steam trying to expand 1,600 times, and it's not able to, and it creates pressure in the return system. With those issues, then there are a need for areas to have condensate pumps. So the thing is, is that we have to look at it so, as a system. And the thing again, as we were talking about before, as long as the inlet pressure is greater than the outlet pressure, life is good. If the outlet pressure here can be greater than the inlet pressure, then you need a condensate pump system. Now in pressurized return systems, because we have high pressure on the process applications, which are shown here, and the pressure is great enough, then we can go into a pressurized return system and recover the flash thing. Now, depending on distances from the boiler plant, we might have this tank running at 50 PSI and then pump the condensate back to the deaerator operation or possibly pump it directly back into the boiler run. That is pressurized system. But the thing about any system is, is that we want to return the condensate as hot as possible. So we contain the flash and the sensible energy in the condensate and deliver it to areas that we can recover it. That increases our steam system thermal cycle efficiency, which is a benchmark today that we have to be looking at. Now, a pressurized system or any part of the system, you know, the system can operate under pressure. So the thing and with these systems here, that we can have pumps located down in here to help us deliver the condensate back. There are other segments in the systems that here we are not using a pump to deliver back. So it depends on the system and you have to look at a system if you really do need a condensate pump or not. The, the thing with condensate pumps, we have to have reliability and the reliability is having industrial pumps, which have a cost to them, of course, and we want operation of 15 years. We want no failure of any pump, specifically a condensate. I mean, a condensate pump is, it's water. I mean, simplest thing that we do is we pump. So it should last you 25 years. <laughs> so, but that becomes in the design of the system the tank designed correctly, the pumps with correct NPSH. In a proper system put in, there is a need for it. And my point is, understand it's a system and you have to look at it as a system to make sure that you do really need a condensate pump. So how to get some? Understand the current system, roadmap for changes or implement changes, and to document the success of the program. This is our contact information, and you know we do steam system assessments, engineering, uh, steam balance, and steam system performance assessments. And one of the big factors that we support our customers is training, specifically different parts of the steam system. We also do long-term impacts for upgrades to the system, process change, improve reliability and safety, which is our focus on all our systems. If you have any questions, please contact. This is our contact information and have a great day.